the guardians of our health, our doctors, nurses, teachers and parents, are working together to keep us well. All of them must know and agree on the health practices we need at home, in the neighborhood and at school. This is Joan getting ready for school. Joan learned at school that it's important to choose the right clothes on a cold day. The temperature is 40, too cold for just a coat. She will need her snowsuit if she wishes to keep well for the Dutch festival. And this is Jim, Joan's brother. They choose wraps to keep all of their body warm. Mother is good to see Jim looking so well this morning. Their color is good, their eyes alert. They're ready for work or play. Mother needs to get another supply of paper handkerchiefs. Jim's friend George is eating an apple as he waits for them. That is a wise no thank you, Joan. Never share another's food. George has forgotten something. Something that helps keep him clean. It's lucky for George that Joan has an extra tissue to lend him. Some children learn to jump or go around puddles, but George wades right into trouble because he forgot his galoshes. This is Miss May, Joan's teacher. George and Joan are glad to be in school. The children are getting ready for their Dutch festival. Tom has brought the thermometer in so that the children can guess what the weatherman doll should wear today. A raincoat and umbrella? Oh no, a snowsuit and galoshes to keep him warm and dry. It was hard to guess today, but Tom is a good guesser. Or did Mother tell him what to wear? George, you forgot something more important than your handkerchief. You forgot to cover your sneeze, and cold germs travel on your sneeze or cough, you know. Why, cold germs can fly farther than Miss May can blow the feather. Cold germs can fly eight feet to another child's nose, hand, or food. People who put fingers into their mouths make it easy for cold germs to come to them. No, not that way, George. Blow your nose gently without pressing the opening of the nostrils closed. That's better. Oh, and your feet are wet. It's easy to catch cold when your body is chilly. You'd better go and see the school nurse. She'll help you. The nurse is examining Mary after her cold. Four days at home with a cold keeps others from catching it and protects you from serious infections that follow colds. Now, George, who sent you in here? Miss May said I might be catching a cold. Well, what do you think? I'm hot and chilly. Well, did you sleep pretty well last night and did you feel like getting up this morning? Did your breakfast taste good? I hardly had time to have my breakfast. I had an apple on the way. Now blow your nose, George. Oh, not so hard, gently. No pressure on the opening. Now let's look at your throat. Open wide. All right, now you sit down. And I'll take her. You moisten your lips and hold it under your tongue. Oh, your feet are wet too, George. The neck goes three, two, one. Hello, is it Mrs. Powell there? Yes. Well, this is Miss Wright, Mrs. Powell. George came in to see me a few moments ago with a cold. Yes, his throat is quite red and his feet are wet too. I do think he'd be more comfortable at home in bed. Well, just a minute, please. Yes, his temperature is 99.8. Well, it is best to consult your physician if it goes over 100, especially during the cold season. Oh, that would be nice of you to call for him. Yes, he'll be right here in my office. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Joan's mother visits school to plan a health program. Joan must learn to take responsibility for keeping herself well. This weather chart keeps Joan alert to weather changes as she marks snowy or rainy days. Dressing this weather doll for outdoor weather 
helps Joan know what to wear herself. It will be better for mother when Joan chooses wraps to suit the temperature instead of arguing about what friends wear. Mother and teacher check Joan's health habits. They plan better health practices for home and school. At school, Joan's committee keeps the washroom attractive with soap sponges, brushes and signs. Others keep the closets neat with boxes for rubbers and hangers for clothes. Another records the temperature and tells us when we need heat or fresh air. One group keeps large drawing pencils scrubbed ready for use. Those are jobs Joan and Jim could be learning to do at home, too. On Saturdays, they left to help us plan what we're going to do. I'm so glad to get this health record sheet. Your check on Joan's habits at school will help me plan a corrective health program at home. I'm going to find out what kind of health practices we use. And I must check on our equipment to see if we have the materials to carry on the school practices. Thank you for some grand ideas, Miss May. I'm going to visit school again some afternoon when I call for Joan. May I? Do come often. It is good for teachers and children to have parents visit school. Next morning, Joan's mother is inspecting the health materials in her home. Each one in the family needs a separate towel and washcloth. Mother has one for Jim and another for Joan, each with his own name. Joan's father made a box for her to stand on. It's no fun washing if you have to stretch or can't see into the basin. And here are new cups. Each can have his own cup now. It prevents catching another's cold. Why, oh, Jim, why are you so cross? Father has taught Joan to spit into the toilet, for spitting spreads disease. Here are the spoons for your cod liver oil, Joan. It's extra sunshine for us in winter and spring. You know, strong bodies can't always keep us from catching cold, but they help us resist a serious illness that may follow colds. Keep away from persons with colds and keep your hands clean while you're eating. Jim must wash his hands after he pets his dog, but he won't have to go upstairs as father has arranged a wash stand downstairs so Jim will remember to wash. What's the trouble with Jim? He didn't like his breakfast and he was restless as he slept. He's cross and tired this morning. His throat isn't very red, but his eyes look queer. He better stay home today so that mother can watch him and keep him warm. Joan's mother can't go to the Kermis now, so Joan must take the paper bags for the party. Colds are easy to catch during the first 24 hours. Mother must see that Jim covers his coughs and stays away from others. She must sterilize his dishes by boiling them thoroughly in water. Joan's room at school is a busy place, and Joan wants to help get ready for the Kermis. But first, she must wash her hands. We must always wash hands clean before handling food. So, Joan takes off her coat, uses plenty of soap and a good lather. She rinses her hands well and dries them thoroughly with a paper towel. In another room, the kindergarten children are getting ready for the Kermis. It's best to go to the toilet and wash hands first. Now Joan has her wraps off, her hands are clean, and she's ready to pack the bags for the Kermis. The Kermis has started. George's friends are selling the flowers they raised. They learn that flowers, like children, need plenty of sunshine, water, good food, and moderate temperature to make them grow. Joan's friends are selling cheese, and they are careful to keep the food clean. Everyone is having a good time, while poor George stays in bed. His careless habits have made Jim miss the Kermis too, and Jim is restless in bed. Now he knows it pays to avoid people with colds. But Jim's friends are enjoying the Kermis. They learn that Dutch people are clean. Hollanders leave their wooden shoes on their doorstep so that their floors are spotless. The Dutch drink milk and raise their own vegetables and flowers. They keep well. You have seen these children learning to take care of themselves. Now, do you know why George and Jim missed the Kermis?